All right, I'm tied up to the uh, mooring here. And look at that. Look at that. Huge barracuda right there. And a huge. Uh, um, I don't know what kind of fish is that one. I think it's a. Um, look at this other barracuda right there. There's a lot of fish here. And there's a tarp in there too. Look at that nice. Huge barracuda. Service, one, six, yeah, so there's two of them right there. Yeah, that's a tarpon right there. Yeah, that's a tarpon. Huge tarpon. Well, definitely this little cat here with the lighthouse is it's really nice look at how blue the water's over there i wouldn't stay here at night because if a storm hits here it's going to get real rough so i'd rather be anchored over there by the fortress you can see the seaplane is about to land right there. Very quiet here. The weather is perfect. Ocean is real calm. That's the tarpon right there. Going under the boat. He has to be at least six feet. All right, I got to make some leaders for tomorrow. I'm going to go fishing in the same spot when I was coming over to uh, dry tortugas. I want to do the rigging now because tomorrow there's not going to be any time. And later on tonight I'll be cooking. If it wasn't for the leader, I would have lost those fish. Because the rocks are about this big, and you can tell um, the heavy leader that I use, it was getting all scratched up. So if I didn't have a leader, it would have hit the threaded line. Would have lasted you no time. This is the way that I use. I know it's a killer. It's heavyweight. If it hits the fish in the head, it's guaranteed it's going to kill it. What better place to do your rigging here? This is a small piece of paradise here. Let me show you what I do here. Usually what I do is I get this three-point swivel. And then I get one of these crimps, put it through the line. These crimps, they don't go anywhere. Once you crimp them, it's going to break somewhere else, not here. See, once I put the mono here. Squish it once on this side and then on the other side. Squish it again. Look at this. That's not going to go anywhere. It's guaranteed. I have never seen this thing come apart. Never. Tomorrow I want to head to the same spot that I was when I came in. And then I'm going to check on the tarp plotter. I think I'm going to visit the Marquesas. I saw it on my way over here but I did not stop.
So tomorrow, probably about six o'clock or seven, I would like to be arriving at the Marquesas so I can uh, find a place to sleep. And then the next day, I'm gonna do some exploration there. And then here, this is what I like to do, a number six hook, circle hook. That's what I like to use for those big fish. And I can't believe the yellow tail. I was catching it with a number six hook. That's a big hook for them. So I'm gonna do two sets of the same rigging. All right, so this is the, how I do my rigging. Put a swivel right up here. The three point swivel here. And then you'll see here, the weight is about a foot and a couple of inches lower than the bait. So that way the bait, when I'm pulling on the line, the bait is dangling on top and the weight is not spooking the fish. Because if I'm a fish, this weight will freak me out if I see that down there. Same rigging and I was catching a lot of grouper. So basically if you don't have this for a big grouper, uh, a big leader, especially when there's big structure, the line is going to go under. The, the threaded line, if you use threaded line, it's going to go under the rock and it's going to snag you up. I said I got my rigging ready for tomorrow. Got two of these already. And I'll make a lighter tackle to get the yellow tail. I have a smaller hook for the yellow tail. I believe this is number two. If you already have a method of doing this, awesome. Uh, this works for me. I will place the link in the description below of the crimping tool and also the same size of the leader that I use and the little crimps for the leader and um, also the hooks that I use. I'll place the link in the description below. If you don't know how to do your own rigging, um, this is how I do mine and it works really well for a uh, grouper. I know the lighter the tackle, the better it is, but a lot of people go fishing with light tackle and what's gonna happen? A big grouper like the one that I was fighting, he was about 28 inches, 26 inches, he was huge. When I was pulling it up, the line, nothing broke. So that's what I like. When you have lighter leaders, eh, what's going to happen is you're going to lose some fish. All right, before I take a shower, I'm going to clean my fish so I can cook dinner today. All right, I'm going to eat three yellow tails. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fillet them. I already cleaned them yesterday. Three should be more than enough. Look at that. Took all the meat out. The yellow tail is a very smooth meat. And I'm also going to cook it with beer batter, which gives it that awesome flavor. There's some bones here along the line here, and there's some bones on this side here where the belly is. They cut that in, it has no bones. It's pretty good meat, enough meat uh, for one person. Look at those beautiful fillets. Look at that. Beautiful. I'm gonna pull it back in the cooler and this is gonna be for dinner. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to put the beer here, since I already have a sip lock, and I'm also going to put the, uh, the batter in there.
doing this in the Ziploc, no mess at all. I got potato and I got also um, plantains again. I also got potato, I can make french fries, but I want to make some more plantains. I don't eat plantains when I'm at home that much. It's only when I come boating. I love to eat my plantains. It's just like french fries. Perfect. All right, dinner's done. I got some hot plantains and some beer batter yellowtail, and it smells incredible. Some tartar sauce. See how this tastes. I have no words for it. Yellowtail has a different taste than grouper. Grouper has a slight taste of fish. Yellowtail is different. Look how it looks inside. very less oily the grouper is more oily the meat has more oil to it tomorrow I'm going fishing see if I'll be able to take some fish home I already got a huge grouper where I cleaned it put it on top of the ice see if I catch uh, some more fish to take home A lot of people say, why do you eat standing up? Well, the air conditioner is hitting me right here, as you can tell. And it keeps me very cool. It's so hot outside. I don't know how campers do it. Today I passed by to a camper right by the fort. He was completely drenched. It's hot out here. Even though you're surrounded by water, it creates the vapor, not in the morning or the midday, especially after four o'clock. Oh, again today the sunset was not that great because of the clouds what happened exactly yesterday the same thing those birds are louder than my generator
got almost a full moon. Probably like three quarters. I got stuck in the fridge. I had a lot of drinks today. And the battery of the fridge um, works perfect. It's a very light battery. Beans. All right, the wind looks like it's changing a little bit. Let's see if we have any storms. Look at all the boats. All those dots are boats. And I'm the very far one here. A lot of boats. I've never been to an anchorage with so many boats staying overnight. Let's see if we see any storms. Yeah, it looks like we're clear. Hopefully no rain. And my anchor alarm is working good. Right now we have uh, shifted somewhat. The moon is out. And this is all the boats at nighttime. And that's the fortress right there. There's a lot of boats here. Some of my viewers asked me, what do you put on your coffee? Well, See, this is what I put. I put some brown sugar. Brown sugar is just raw sugar, and it's healthier for you. It's not as sweet as white sugar, but this is way healthier. It's way healthier than uh, white bleach sugar. And yesterday, I didn't drink any coffee because it was late. The storm got to me. Didn't have time to make coffee, and plus, it was too late. And today, I got some uh, cream filled puff pastry. This has got to be good. Anything that is puff pastry, it's got to be good. I think I had this before. This little uh, puff pastries. It has white cream in it. It's really good. I'm sure it's not good for you, but it's really good. Check out this shark.
It's a huge shark came through here. There it is. We got it. this way. I'm going to try to do some fishing. I saw some fish down there, but it looks like they don't want to bite. Key West is right here. This is just an island here. And this is the Marquesas right here. So tomorrow I have no clue where I'm going to be staying at. Um, depends where the wind is hitting. The wind is hitting this way up. I'm, I'm probably going to go around the back area here. Alright, there's a plan for tomorrow. Fishing, uh, deep sea fishing and then coming over here to the Marquesas. I want to show you how many things I'm running on the generator in the cabin. I have a charger there. There's charging those two batteries there. So that charges charging those and also the boat battery. So that way it doesn't drain the uh, anchor alarm that I'm using. I have the uh, navigation lights on and also the cockpit on the water lights, charging phones and camera equipment. And also, I am making some ice. So just making some ice. That takes a little power because it has a compressor. And I have the air conditioner running. It has another compressor. This one has another compressor. So there's three refrigeration compressors on board. The air conditioning, the ice machine, and the fridge. Now, that charger there charges those batteries. Now, I have another charger here. This one is charging the three Minn Kota batteries that are right in here. And also, I'm charging my toothbrush. There's also a blower right here. This blower is what keeps the air out of the uh, air conditioner and exits through the... Uh, And while all that is happening, I'm drying my clothes here with the hot air that is coming through here. I'm drying my clothes that I used today. So there's a lot of power being consumed in the boat. So that's why I had to get the 2,500 watt uh, generator because the 2,200 watt was not enough for all the equipment that I have in here. It wasn't enough. And also I'm charging the Enrich Mini. So there's a lot of power consumption here. Without the generator, I can't be out here. Because only the refrigeration and keeping the ice on the fish. There's fish in the cooler. Keeping the fish uh, cold, it requires some energy. And there's nowhere you can go here and buy a bag of ice. There's no stores here, there's nothing. There's just a remote place. 
it's not even no cell phone service here the only communication i have is the inreach mini that's the only communication i have i don't have any other communication well i have the vhf radio uh, that i can talk to any bolts around the, here but that's it so yes power for me is very important to be out here uh, without my refrigeration and ice and also air conditioner it's really rough to be in here especially in the cabin boat without air conditioning it gets really muggy and uh, humid in here but right now it feels perfect and look at this every 30 minutes i get a clean cup of water out of the air conditioning and you know since i don't have water here this comes very handy what i do is uh, i have a, a bottle of bleach here and one drop one drop of bleach will neutralize the water and then i'll go out here <laughs> right here in my reservoir and this water is just to wash off so yeah every 30 minutes I get a whole cup of water out of here when I go to sleep I put a bigger container here so I get about a half a gallon out of that container so that way I don't run out of water because I still have a couple of more days that I'm gonna be here at the boat um, and there's no way to replenish my water tank so all that container there, all that life well full of water, but right now it's only three quarters. And I don't want to run out of water because if I do run out of water, I have to go back uh, to civilization. So I want to keep my water source and my fuel source. If I have those two things, I can continue to be here remotely. So out of those two things, fuel and water, it is mandatory for my trip. If I don't have either or, I have to go. And the bleach is really important. That water, the air conditioner container, uh, there's no mildew in there because every time I finish my trips, I let it dry out. I don't let the water stay there stagnant. So the water will come through that tube there to the cup. As I was talking to you, it's already collecting water. So bleach in a survival situation like this, uh, bleach is very important to have. I also put bleach into the tank of water also to keep it uh, healthy. There's a legend of a man beneath the sea is a fisher of men. Alright guys, I'm going to take some rest now and I'll continue this trip on the next video. And if you like this video,